to cover up the last of the insulation in my bus, the final boss is the ceiling. And that's what me and Adam are getting started on today. And that's the topic of today's video. My name's Chuck Cassidy, and we're gonna be talking about how I'm covering up the ceiling in my bus. And that is why I'm holding a piece of this beautiful quarter inch tongue and groove cedar. I think you can imagine what my plan is with it. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna be an interesting video. We're gonna be getting a little bit bendy and we've got some nice time lapses coming your way that you're not gonna to wanna to miss if you like that kind of thing. Stick around. Now before we get started on the video of how we install these, I wanna go over the tools and materials you're gonna need if you wanna do it just like I'm doing it. Start off with the tools. I've got my trusty DeWalt 12 inch sliding double miter compound bevel big boy saw. It's a great saw, highly recommend it. You'll know what I'm talking about. You're gonna want your typical PPE. Now when it comes time to shoot the ceiling up, we're gonna be using an 18 gauge narrow crown stapler. This one's cordless from Milwaukee. We're shooting inch and a half long staples, plenty long to hold this ceiling in with ease. And since our ceiling is only a quarter of an inch thick, we're gonna have a lot of bite into our strapping. The strapping, remember, is two layers of three quarter inch plywood. So we've got an inch and a half that that staple can go into before it pokes through on the other side. We should be good. We've got a little bit of wood glue in case we need it, a jigsaw for making our curved cuts around the bathroom wall, a scribe, which you know I love, for marking those curved cuts, a pry bar for working the tongue and grooves into place, a hammer or a mallet is also very useful for tapping those in, and then if you're doing puck lights, now is the time to cut those openings. This is a two and a quarter inch hole saw, which works for my puck lights. You wanna check, of course, and make sure the ones you use are gonna work for you. And the last but not least, which came in very helpful at the end, is this thing called a helping hand. And it's a telescoping adjustable sort of jack that you can use to push pieces of wood into place. And it was really helpful, even though me and Adam are big, strong dudes and we have four hands between the two of us, we still needed this in the front to push those last pieces into place so we could tap the tongue and grooves together. If you're doing a bus or doing anything overhead, these are handy for all kinds of things from installing the ceiling to hanging upper cabinets. I highly, highly recommend them. Outside of that, just a screw gun and a drill and we're good to go. Let me show you why I chose this material for my ceiling. All right, let me get a little closer and show you what I'm using for my ceiling material. This is cedar, they call it closet liner, but it's a quarter inch thick and it's got a tongue on one side whoop, and it's got a groove on the other side. So they click together and you know, they'll hide the seam a little bit and cover up your roof really nice. What I really like about this material, aside from the fact that it smells great and looks beautiful, is that it's thin enough that it's very easy to bend. And if it wasn't kind of obvious before, but I'm gonna be using this to run across the ceiling of my bus and it's gonna take the curve and we're gonna staple it with our quarter inch narrow crown staples into the framing that I previously installed. And we're just gonna march our way all the way down the roof of the bus, starting at the back, working our way forward. We're gonna spill into the bathroom and we'll take care of that when it happens. This stuff is amazing. It's also relatively affordable. It's lightweight, so that's kind of nice. It keeps the weight you know, a little lower on the bus and it has excellent rot and moisture resistance being cedar. So I feel really confident putting this in the shower, in the bathroom, really not worried about that at all. And because it's got the tongue and groove thing happening, that groove thing means that we're essentially creating a, another vapor barrier <laughs> out of our cedar on the ceiling. And that's gonna help keep moisture out of our ceiling system. Pretty stoked about it. We're gonna go back inside and I'm gonna show you a lovely time-lapse of me and Adam getting going, installing this. And we're just gonna march it all the way down. And there isn't much really to cover with the technique there other than you just wanna go slow and very carefully work the tongue into the groove of each piece as you march down. And if you encounter places where you need to tap it in with a hammer, I recommend getting a sacrificial, you know, off cut. If I got one here like this, that has the tongue in place on it still. I don't know if you can see there. Focus. And you put that groove, sorry, it has the groove in place still. You put that groove on the tongue and that gives you a nice flat surface to pound on that won't damage the tongue on the piece you're installing. That's a nice little tip there. Other than that, it's gonna be a little bit spooky. It's gonna make cracking sounds, but that's a-okay. 
and also be prepared to have about 5% waste with these pieces. They're not very precisely milled. And because they're so thin, they have a tendency to get a little bit, a little bit hooky, uh, but it's also very forgiving because it's so thin. So you'll be surprised in what you can pull off, uh, especially like on my bus, because the roof does this little dip thing there, the cedar can take it. So we'll go inside, we'll get the time-lapse going and you can see how Adam and I got this shot up. All right, so here are Adam and I getting started at the back wall because that seemed like the easiest way to do it. You could start at the front if you wanted to. And getting these first couple of pieces in can be really tough because there's no other pieces to hold them in shape, which is a useful thing. And getting that back piece up against the back wall means you don't have a lot of great angles to hold it. And I'm not gonna lie, we struggled and got a little demoralized despite knowing that this is possible, <laughs> trying to get these first few pieces on. We grabbed the mallets, we kept a level head, and before we knew it, we were working our way out of the bedroom and into the hallway, and I just love the way it starts to come together. Once you get a few pieces established and you can just cruise down, here's a little tip. Cut a few lengths at a time. Overall, the width that you need if you're doing a ceiling like this is not gonna vary tremendously, but it is nice to try to keep that gap as small as possible. Then again, cutting a few pieces at a time, it'll save you time. So if you're okay with a little bit of a gap, and I am, because I'll be trimming that out, go ahead and batch cut those pieces and put them into place. And if you get a piece that isn't perfect, set it aside, be picky, get a nice piece. It's gonna make install a lot easier. Now, as you can see, when we get to the bathroom, we let the pieces get short when we come against the wall. And then once we get back into the bathroom, we start running our pieces long again. And we're gonna do that for the width of the doorway. And then once we're past the bathroom and everything's done, we'll come back in and finish those short pieces in the bathroom. And for that section, we're gonna use pieces cut in half that were the remnants or the leftovers from the pieces that we pulled that weren't straight or good enough to use all of. So we're setting those aside and saving them for the bathroom. Well, if you have noticed in the last couple of videos, I've been getting some help, and that helps me coming from Adam. Adam uh, is a buddy of mine. Adam, meet the Chuck Cassidy audience. Howdy, folks. <laughs> He's a really ta talented carpenter, uh, much more talented than I am, and so I'm really Aww. grateful to have his help. We've only got a few weeks left at the shop, and honestly, we've got a massive punch list. So Adam's helping me knock all this stuff out, and he helped me hang the walls. We're busting through the ceiling right now. And uh, we're just going to see how far we can get before the shop closes. It's been going smooth. Yeah. So this is Adam, in case you were wondering. And uh, yeah, well, we better get back to work now. All right, now we've cleared the bathroom and you know, scribing that piece around that curved wall was a little bit tricky, but you know, we got it on the second try, not a big deal. And as we marched toward the front, I was talking about how my roof does that curve where it bends down and dips down a little bit before we get to that front windshield. And that is where things got a little bit tricky for us, but you'd be surprised how much these cedar boards can curve and take that. And so we had good luck and then we got to the front there, that's when we had to bust out that helping hand that jack that we use to put in position and press up on the piece of wood while Adam and I both take turns tapping the tongue and groove into position before we nail it into place. But once we got all of that done and got through the tricky part, it came together really nice. And I just have to say the final result is looking pretty good.
Now just take a look at how this ceiling turned out. Mm, and not a lick of spray foam to be seen. And I just love this, the way that wall pops right into existence out of the cedar. Just awesome. Really excited. It took the bend great. Now you can see where we have our puck lights. We cut our two and a quarter inch holes. Those lights will just pop in there. We'll go ahead and get those all butt spliced together. And then down here where the vent fan is, there's the trim ring that goes right around that. And you can cut that to length. Don't worry, that's just melted from when I did the heat shrink a little aggressively. But we are all set. And I just love the way it turned out. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like that ceiling turned out great. And it's so nice to go in the bus and not see spray foam anywhere. I'm in heaven. Anyway, feel free to copy that design. I like it so much. This isn't obviously the first time I've done it. I did it on the bus I lived in for five years, my friend Alyssa's bus, Regretless. And also we did it on the bus that we built for Gutted. I think it's a great ceiling and it offers a lot of those benefits that I talked about earlier that make a ceiling so great. Copy it if you want. Maybe you can find a better wood for it. I don't know. Let's experiment. Thanks for watching. My name's Chuck Cassie, and we will see you next week. Before we wrap things up, I want to give a quick shout out to all of the people supporting this channel on Patreon, the Warland Warriors level. We can't do it without your support. It means the world to me. In no particular order, we've got Zoe Johnson, Cody Thompson, Patrick Wyatt Riley, Gian Mario, Swirly01, James Seidel, Steve Drumheller, Dan Burkett, Zachary Taylor, The Happy Fractal, Chad Foss, and Gypsy. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. It means the world to us over here, and it makes content like this possible, not only for you, but everybody else. Thank you very much.